Okay, all right, we'll start. So you people may be knowing like about this uh, session. I'm just conducting this demo session for the upcoming training batch for uh, May 2023. Okay, for both architecture and MAP. So especially for MAP also, as we are seeing a lot of uh, requirements in market and especially maybe for freshers. Okay. So we know BIM, it's building information modeling. OK, so like, you know, traditional way of working. What is the traditional way of working? Maybe we used to like draft on a paper. OK, but we will be maybe doing the buildings itself. We will be constructing the buildings or infrastructure. OK, but we used to have tools as you are maybe like drafter. OK, scale or something like that. So these are just what these are like tools. So this is like traditional way of working. So after that. We are there with. Uh, like uh, CAD technology that is computer aided design where again we had like three different file formats maybe. OK, as a minimum. Like your 2D plan, 3D model and quantities in Excel. OK. And I hope like you are able to see the screen. If not, maybe you can message me on WhatsApp. OK, so that again I can maybe share it. OK, and I'm assuming like again my voice is also clear with you. All right, if anything is there, you can just message me on WhatsApp. All right, so again you can check out the traditional way of working. It's nothing but like CAD technology after the paper. OK, that is maybe a computer games. So we started using the computers and we, we are again doing the uh, work like we again use the technology of the previous years. OK, like uh, CAD that is computer aided design where we had again three different file formats like 2D, 3D and Excel quantities, for example. So 2D file is a different thing. 3D model is a different thing. OK, so again quantities is a different thing. So if any changes happens in 2D plan, maybe we need to update that in 3D. Also, we need to update in Excel sheet. And if any changes happens in 3D model, again, we need to update in 2D also in maybe Excel sheet. So that is becoming like a repetitive, repetitive kind of like work. OK, too much like tedious work and maybe we forget something. So if we forget any element that will cause maybe less quantities OK in Excel. So that will be a problem. So again, you can check out now like what is the way of working in BIM and what was the way of working in CAD? You can check out. We can maybe say CAD as 2D and also 3D. But one thing you can check out. Previously, for example, we had 2D. Maybe also we were working with 3D. So that was a mixture of 2D plus 3D. OK. So but whatever the 3D model was there, you can check out. It's just a 3D model which does not contain any information. But if you check for BIM 3D model, it contains information like there is an example of this cube here. OK, and you can check out in 2D. We don't have any information in 3D. You, you can check out again the model maybe or cube is there in 3D, but we don't have any information about that one. But if you check for a BIM model, you can check out you're having the information about it such as ID fabrication uh, like man, maybe manufacturer who is like fabricator and color model number cost etc so that is your information so bim is not only about just 2d and 3d it's about 3d plus data all right so if data is not there then again what you are doing you are again like working in a traditional way like 3d because some companies again maybe they mix uh, bim with 2d or they mix bim with just 3d so if they are not working with information then again they are just working with the previous okay like way of like method only so that like will not work okay in this uh, like era we can say all right so what is the difference between cat and bim okay and why we are switching from the traditional way of work that is cat to bim so we know cat in cat maybe we are there with mainly 2d plus 3d but no information okay so and check out Come necessary. Maybe we need to print like a pre in previous years. Maybe we need to print the papers and all. And there is a lot of like manual work will happen in CAD technology. 
Okay, in between, maybe some people will join. I'll be adding them again. Next thing you can check out. It's a slow work and the team is disconnected. OK, so for example, if they're like consultant, contractors, subcontractors, client, facility management team, so everybody is disconnected. OK, or maybe one or two is connected, one or two, two teams are connected, but not all. But if you check in BIM, you can see it's about 3D. It does not start with 2D. OK, it's about 3D model itself. All right, so it's nothing but again after 3D, we have 4D, 5D, like 6D, 7D, 8D, maybe up to ND. OK, so whatever the next thing comes in which BIM helps, so that dimension maybe you can add. For example, 3D means like completely 3D modeling with information. 4D means 3D plus time. 5D means 3D plus cost. OK, for example, 6D means 3D plus energy. So in that way, if we are using a model for different types of like things or scenarios, then we can add the dimension. OK, now check out. Other thing is electronic communication. We are not going to print now. OK, we don't have like printings and all. All right, so we'll be like using electronic communication or electronic data exchange. Like for example, maybe we're exchanging directly the models itself. OK, we are not exchanging any printed copies with the contractors, subcontractors or some other people's here. OK, and the way of work is also like going to be automated. OK, the main thing you can check out the previous work was like manual and currently it is about like automation. OK, so BIM helps in these things. So we need to use these processes, not just maybe for example Revit. So some people who start working in BIM, maybe they will think only for Revit. OK, companies are getting the work in this way, but the real scenario for this one is to use these things like to make the process like automate. OK and faster work and fully integrated like we'll be getting connected through the cloud. So previously we may maybe you're not using cloud, but here we can use cloud and we can connect to a single model itself. OK, so previously what it was, it was like we are having 2D plans in a different file, 3D model in a different file and Excel in a different file. OK, but in BIM you can check out it's only one file. OK, where Maybe in future again, it will be just one file where we can do better integration. OK, of the tools if we are again, if you are using maybe different kind of tools, but that can be integrated. OK, so I hope like you got it. What is mean by 2D 3D? OK, and your BIM model. All right, so there is a difference in between th these things. Now let's see because I'll just describe you whatever the things are there about BIM. Maybe at last you can just ask the questions or queries, whatever you have related to BIM or maybe the trainings. OK, so you can check out what is BIM. So we know BIM is nothing but what the long form is building information modeling. But the description nothing but it's a process of creation and use of information about the construction. So mainly BIM is related, related to construction. OK, not for the like entire maybe different uh, sectors here. So BIM is mainly for the AEC sector. OK, CAD maybe it's for all the sectors all the other parts, but BIM is for the construction sector. OK, so where maybe we are doing a lot of traditional work, a lot of like manual work. So and there is no connection in between the teams. So that is why we are switching from CAD to BIM. So whatever the technologies are coming up, we are using those technologies through BIM in the construction. OK, so your BIM model, for example, this is your BIM model, whether it is created in Revit, Archicad or whatever the software we use, but the process is important. OK, what is the process? It is the process of creation and use of information about the construction, which forms a reliable basis for all decisions over lifetime of a project from concept to till demolition. So whatever the model we are using, whatever the model we have here, OK, so that BIM model will help you during the concept design, during the detailed design, during construction or pre-construction and during operation, renovation and demolition. So this one BIM model will help your cost throughout the entire life cycle of it. OK, so it's nothing but like a digital prototype or a digital twin for you of whatever the physical building you have in your area or whatever it is. OK, so we can use the model 
to save the time and cost. And mainly if you go through like why the BIM is also getting mandated, OK, it is because of like saving time and cost using this model. OK, using the BIM process, we can save better time and cost. So that is why we are switching from CAD to BIM. Maybe we are saving, for example, 5% of CAD uh, like. That. So we can maybe save 20% of cost in BIM. So that is why we can switch from CAD to BIM here. OK, so again you can check out. See this. BIM model or BIM process can be used. Life cycle of a project. I'll, I'll just explain using some examples here. For example, we have this, this like sample project here. OK, so you can check out Revit is one of the tool. To execute this BIM process, it's not like completely Revit is not BIM. It's one of the tool which will help you to create a information database. That's it. But again, we'll for, for example, as we discussed, like you need to do some collaboration here or you need to do full integration for that one. Maybe you need to use some cloud platform. So Revit is not a cloud platform. Revit is a software which can be installed in your PC. OK, for a cloud platform, again, you need to go for some solutions. For example, from Autodesk, maybe you're having Autodesk construction cloud. OK, or maybe some other like clouds are there for which maybe we can say common data environment. So again, for like you need to switch from manual works to automated works. So what you will do now if you want to go for automated works, you can use Revit again. Revit is one of the uh, like one a single software maybe for automation, but again we have so many other like tools and technologies we can use for automation. You can use maybe cloud platform. We can we can use Revit. OK, we can use for example Dynamo. OK, if you go further for automation, maybe you can use Dynamo. That is your visual programming tool. So like you need a set of tools to complete this BIM process, not only just one software that is Revit. OK, but Revit is like a major software, but others are like the duration for other softwares can be less, but for Revit it is more. It's a it's, it's like very detailed type of software. So initially we'll be starting maybe with Revit, for example, for a concept or to create information. We are using just Revit itself. For example, assume that whatever the model we have here, I'll just open a 3D model. You can check out a 3D view. So here there, there is a house project. OK, and if you check here, this represents virtual model. So for example, in real, this is railing in Revit. Also, if you select this part here, so the category for this element is railing itself and it contains information that is like real. For example, in real we have the railing, so we have the information here. The category railing we have like what is the level of this like railing and at what level it is placed and what is the overall length of this railing? What is how many balusters are there? How many intermediate rails rails are there? Like whatever the real object is there, this model represents in the same way, but it's up to you whether you create in this way or no. Otherwise, maybe again you are just creating a 3D model. OK, if you select the window again, it resembles like reality. For example, if there is any window in real here, also you need a category of window itself and like it contains some parameters in real, for example, length, width, height, materials and everything. So that information should also contain here. OK, and along with as per client requirement can vary. OK, so whatever the information mo model we are creating, it is to be started with, for example, Revit. OK, so other things you can check out. I'll just create some more information here. Assume that see whatever the model we created. OK, it is maybe used during the concept design. It is used during the primary design. It is used during the final design. Once the model is created, you can use this model for the information takeoff. For example, such as for example, sheets. You can use this information model to take off the quantities also. OK, you can use this information for the like construction purpose. OK, final design purpose, construction purpose, like many other purposes here. OK, so like a lot of things are there. Once you are creating the model, it is useful for overall lifetime of a project. You can check out after the construction. What is the phase? It is about operation and maintenance. OK, for example, you need to you need to have some maintenance for this railing, so you'll be having some information here. OK, 
for example, in real, the construction is finished. Now you need to use this BIM model, OK, for the maintenance purpose. So if you have the model and if you have the information, that will be helpful for you. For example, maybe a maintenance contractor approached you and he said like per meter, for example, my maintenance cost will be around like 500 rupees. So you are having like total information here, like what is the overall length of railing? If you want to calculate, no need, no need to like go to site and measure with the help of tape. OK, you'll be having just model in front of the screen so that easily you can take off the quantities like I, I'm doing right now. So I'll just right click here on schedules and quantities. I'll just click here, go to railing. Just click here, OK. You can check out. I can take family name. Sorry, I can take family name. I can take type name and I can take, for example, length and maybe like cost here. All right, just click here. OK, and you can add other like parameters here to calculate the overall maintenance cost here. For example, I just want to sum up here. So whatever the railings we have, you can check out if, you, if I go to 3D model. OK, you can check out if I select one railing, we are having the length here. OK, if I select like other railing, I'm having the length. So in this way, there is a shortcut here. Like if I press SA, I'll be having overall like 10 numbers of railing. And again, if I press uh, HI, you can check out I'm having like overall railing C here. So whatever the quantities you are having, you can easily take off in the schedule. Again, there is no need to go to like site and do the measurement and take off the quantities here. OK, so you can check out and I, I, I just want to like sum up this one. So I'll go back to sorting and grouping. OK, sort by. Like. Uh, Maybe I'll just sort this one or else I'll just uncheck for itemize every instance. OK, and I'll sort by type. Just click here OK and check out. It says like varies. So I'll go to formatting, select the length and I'll just say calculate totals. So you can check out I got like overall length. Maybe I can just add a cost for this like maintenance purpose that is around 500 rupees, for example. So I can just multiply 500 into length. So I'll get the overall cost here. OK. So you can check out. So in this way, you can easily like calculate the things. OK, you can easily like work on the things without like. Uh, OK, wasting the time. So the main idea is what the main idea is to save the time and cost. OK, so we are doing that one even after the construction during operation and maintenance. Here. OK. So I got maybe I'm just assuming like you got something about like how we can use a BIM model for operation and maintenance. OK, so you can check out here in the same way. If you if you want to do some renovations here, maybe for example, again, client wants to do some renovation for this railings here. I'm just explaining you in according to like architectural model, but maybe you can uh, do the same thing with MEP model and others. OK, now check out. If I again, for example, maybe client again wants to like do some renovations and change this railings here. See, these are like maybe new things. Some of the clients, they already know these things. OK, so to move from traditional way to the this type of like work, we need to explain these things things to the clients also. Maybe sometimes if your company is switching from CAD to BIM so that maybe they can take advantage okay, from this model. All, all right. So if you check here, for example, maybe your clients wants, wants to do some renovations. OK, I'll just press SA. So for example, maybe if I have any other like previous type of railings here. OK, so I can easily take off those railings and I can easily copy into this one and we can change. OK. For example, maybe I have some other railings or maybe the client want to change or maybe they just want to have like they just want to remove this intermediate rails and add like more balusters. So easily we can change because see again after the construction, we have this model with us. So I'll go. I'll go back to edit type and you can check out. I'll just click here and easily I can change the top rail easily. I can change the balusters. Maybe for example, I need to increase the number of balusters. I'll just change like distance from previous to maybe like less. OK, for example, like 500 mm. Just click here. OK, again, OK, 
you can check out we change the maybe like design type so we can give like easily an option for them because already we have the model so again there is no need to do like a remodeling thing we can easily change for example they don't want to have any intermediate trail they just want to remove this one i can go to edit type and rail structure and we can delete all all of these like rails here just click here okay again okay and check out so we have this model again so easily we can do some renovation for anything whether like technical part or maybe this much of like simple things we can easily do the renovation so this one model is there but you can check out it is helping you from concept design to till demolition again for example maybe your client wants to do like demolition and maybe there is a subcontractor who need to like demolish this one and they have a cost around like maybe 1000 rupees per meter so that cost also can be calculated here you can check out i'll go back to railing schedule again and maybe if this is like demolition cost so you can again easily multiply length into cost so that again you can easily get total length of the demolition so no need to go to site and again do the measurements and all okay so for overall life cycle this one model is useful the main thing is it is to create the information model that is for example maybe if i'm not creating the railing using the railing tool here then what happens okay you'll not get the information okay if you're not getting the information then there's no use of like doing or starting with the bim model or implementing like bim technology okay so it should resemble the real world parameters okay how for example this railing it is there like in real okay simply otherwise we can as as we discussed we can easily use bim okay for creating a 3d model without information for example i need to do some 3d modeling here i can easily do it using these things okay but what happens i'll not get the information for example i'll go back to model in place okay even though maybe i'll take the railing category itself just click here okay and if i want to do any like modeling here or railing i can easily do it using these tools here like 3d tools okay for example maybe you just want to have some railing design on this wall here i'll just click here to pick a plane and i'll just snap on the face of this wall okay and i will just do some extrusions and all okay for example maybe i'm just assuming whether this is railing or whatever it is just click here okay and check out okay you can check out here whatever the model i created it's like very easy in an easy way i just created a 3d model but you can check out i don't have any information even though maybe this is railing i don't have any information like what is the length of this railing for example and if i go to edit type what is the like number of balusters okay what is the top rail so i don't have like, any information here much information about this one so it depends like how rich information models you can create simple informations models also you can create but if you create rich information model you can use that information throughout the life cycle see information in the sense data now if you need data you need to also correct that one you need to add the correct data instead of adding a data like simple whatever improper data if you are adding into the model then again it will create a problem okay and maybe you'll not be there with the proper like things okay so that is important for us all right i think maybe you got it so that is why we say here whatever the information model you are creating okay it forms a reliable basis for decisions over the lifetime of a project from concept to till demolition and in between maybe construction final design operation renovation okay all the stages now check out what type of tools we are using here so again like you can check out i just use revit but again revit why we are using okay it is like bim authoring that means we can use revit for creating information database but to exchange that information data information database again we need to use the technology so what technology we can use here again maybe you can use cloud based platforms for example such as autodesk construction cloud so this is what this cloud will help you to like connect the teams do better collaboration and exchange the files or exchange the data in between like teams here so what is happening you can check out for one purpose to create information database we are using revit okay to exchange the files again we are using cloud so in the same way to do like automation maybe you can use dynamo so lot of things are there okay for example to do again some construction sequencing maybe you can use navisworks 
to do like better costing and all you can use this again this technology such as your costex to for visualization purposes whatever the technologies are there such as vr ar mr that is your virtual reality augment reality mixed reality okay you can use again this upcoming like software such as for example unreal engine unity twin motion and escape lumion these are what these are also like uh, like vr enabled maybe like uh, software or ar enabled or maybe like mr enabled software so we can use for better visualization so again for model weaving to do the clash detection or to solve the problems of coordination in the model again you can use several like platforms here a lot of things are going on but if we are connected with the companies better companies maybe we can know about like things here so bim it is not only about revit revit is just one software but for the other purposes like whatever we have here okay to fulfill those purposes we need to use different set of tools here so as a bim professional we need to learn at least like one tool in all of these headings okay but maybe as per the if you are work if you are doing a job maybe you need to learn as per the company's requirement okay you cannot maybe learn as per your requirement or any institute requirement okay you need to go as per the market requirement okay now let's see what are the upcoming trends in bim okay in 2023 or maybe beyond so like 3d printing it will be a common like again as we discussed maybe we are not like printing the papers here okay we can do electronic communication we can easily just exchange the models itself okay so again it is the like in future maybe it will be like again more common about the 3d printing still it is there but very like few we can say for example like if you check here 3d printing construction in india like there is one company lnt they started this one they did some sample for 3d printing there is one startup company they also completed this 3d printing okay so you can check out so like what the main thing the main idea is like whatever the manual work is there okay it is going to be like automated okay so in whatever area it is so first thing is what it's like 3d printing in dubai also like previously in just 2019 or 2018 itself they just did the 3d printing okay if you check there they just constructed this was like i think their first uh, 3d printing office then again this is like uh, maybe a latest or maybe some other latest are there so this is again largest 3d printing building in dubai so they just started with this one so if they find like this is more better maybe they can go with these things so again like drone usages or doing some surveys of the site and all okay to move the equipments and everything so we can use drones also in the construction so because these are like general technologies i mean to say so these things we can use in construction through bi okay whether it is in design construction or operation next you can check out it's like cloud based collaboration already we discuss like autodesk construction cloud okay autodesk platform services okay autodesk tandem so different kind of like platforms are there from different companies also also from like autodesk okay so we may be here only about revit but there are a lot of like different softwares available in market okay but because of marketing so we may be here only about revit okay and companies also use the same thing so it is like about cloud based collaboration it will be like more common in coming areas okay and internet of things iot is also becoming like more common okay because whatever the model we are using okay this model we can use for the facility management purposes okay so if there is a connection again in between the physical model and the digital model through this iot sensors then again easily we can get the data of like uh, like elements like how it is behaving for example what is the temperature in the room okay so what is the like health of maybe any like, like any equipment and other thing so easily we'll get the data so that we can manage the facilities using this bim model itself okay then again like augment or virtual realities so the, still there can be many other like things which may be coming up in the few years okay so now if you check what is the market growth of bim industry so in 2020 it was like 8.89 billion dollar in 2026 it is expected to become like 23.2 so almost like three times you can see in just maybe five years almost so it is like almost three years it is going to be like triple 
so fastest growing market is asia pacific like market means like india is also growing so the things will the more things will come to india also in the form of like technology okay the good thing about bim it is like mandates so because of mandates the industry is growing okay so what is like mandate you can check out bim mandates mandate is a set of government policies saying that bim is compulsory for certain or all type of project whether centrally procured or private okay and you can check out some countries will make compulsory gradually maybe from large scale projects to like small scale like for example uh, like in dubai so they started with g plus 40 then g plus 20 okay in singapore also they just maybe they are just up to 4000 square feet in india still it is not mandated but it will come from maybe large scale projects to the important project then to small projects okay and some countries will mandate bim overnight okay depends so why this mandate is required you can check out all government needs to manage secure safe and sufficient infrastructure okay so for a country okay to be like maybe in the form of like development you can maybe mute this All right. So every government, like whatever, for the country, if the country needs to like develop, so whatever the money they're uh, like spending from the taxpayers, okay, without spending much amount of the taxpayers, they want just safe, secure, and sufficient infrastructure for a country to be like into the list of like developed maybe. So in the construction industry, you can check out 98% of large projects suffer 30% extra cost and 40% late delivery of projects so to like the main thing is to what from why government is mandating the main thing it is to save time and cost on these projects here okay so it's like compulsory to use bim process okay and those set of rules will be given by the government set itself like you need to compulsory like implement these type of rules okay so we need to follow these things for example maybe they say you need to follow some maturity levels so we need to follow those things you can check out UK was the first to implement BIM. OK, and then slowly like other countries also started like making it compulsory. So a lot of projects are coming up into this way. OK, so you can check out me ma majorly like West uh, majorly like I can say. Developed countries only like like mandated this thing. OK. So in India recently they did this uh, conference. OK, on national BIM and digital twin strategy. It is around, I think, uh, three, four man months back and they released this uh, uh, some guidelines for these things. OK, but I think it is not compulsory. You can check out it is in 6 September around. OK, so the main thing, the main good thing about BIM, it is like about the mandates. So next thing is like what advantages of BIM. We can do better communication and collaboration. We can do model based cost estimation. OK, and we can visualize the uh, project better like before the construction. We can resolve the coordination issues in the model. OK, in which in the way of like which we can save the time and cost. We can reduce the risk. OK, for example, safety risk. We can reduce financial, legal, environmental project uh, duration risk or cost risk. We can just remove these things using this BIM and we can do improved scheduling and sequencing part using the tools here, maybe like different tools, different types of software we have. Then again, we can increase the productivity with prefabrication. Maybe recently uh, you heard about China, like 10 story building they just constructed in 28 hours. So it was possible using this prefabrication part. So this kind of like modeling prefabricated modeling we can do with the help of Revit so that we can analyze the overall model before it is like jumped to the fabrication part or fabrication phase and we can do better safety on the construction side by adding this kind of like indicators here okay or maybe some levels and other things okay and we easy, easily we can implement the safety and we can like use bim for renovation of project a lot of projects are uh, maybe like adding for the scan to beam Okay, whatever the existing projects are there, we can scan the ex existing projects and we can convert them to a BIM model. Okay, and again, we can use this BIM model for the facility management, renovation, and maybe demolition. 
OK, and whatever the facility management procedure is there, that can be also streamlined using this BIM process. OK, like a lot of like uh, companies are there. There is one platform again. Look, OK, it, it is like Equodomos, so you can maybe go through this thing. So they're using the BIM model for facility management purposes. OK, so for a better, maybe better based. OK, they, what they say here, you can check out. Equodomos BIM based digital twin. So whatever the digital twin they are creating, OK, they're using that one for facility management here. OK, and they can save the time and cost. Now let's see the BIM professionals. We can work in which type of company there is like mostly we have certain doubts here, like in which company we can uh, like work and some of the BIM professionals who are working in the companies. They don't know in which company they are working also. OK, so we can work in client companies, architectural consultant, engineering consultant, BIM consultant, some IT companies to develop this BIM process and some like tools for these things. We can work in contracting companies, subcontracting companies and facility management and some companies such as for example beam automation companies okay so in that with this because this thing is also coming up so we can work in these type of companies and beam can be applied to both buildings and infrastructure okay so because we say building information modeling so it is not only about like building it is about buildings and infrastructure okay and like everyone related to construction like civil engineer architect interior designer mechanical, electrical, any business developer, like software engineer, as I said, like to develop the tools and all, they can also work in this industry here. OK, and a lot of like different positions are there. Like there are mainly three types, production, management and strategic. So maybe we can work at modular level. OK, lower level position such as BIM engineer, BIM lead or coordinator, then BIM manager, director, OK, so for different positions, maybe we can work and again, except these things we have different positions. Spim specialist CD manager. OK, VDC engineer, VDC specialist, 4D BIM specialist, Dynamo specialist to do only like automation, for example, BIM automation engineer. So these type of like positions are also coming up in the industry. So a lot of things are there. So maybe you found something new and maybe you got to learn something new from this uh, like session. So I'll wind up here. So if you have any doubts, you can just unmute and we can discuss like whatever the things you have. Yes, any things we have? Hello. Hello. Hi, Sayed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. yeah. Uh, How are you? I am good, man. How are you? Yeah, yeah it's, good. Good. It's, it's a good session. Huh? Uh, yeah. Sahil, I have one question. There is a dynamo, no? Dynamo. So, mm -hmm. what is the program they are using to uh, implement the dynamo tools in the BIM, in the Civil 3D or Revit? See, uh, for uh, dynamo, uh, Revit is from Autodesk. Okay. Yeah. Civil 3D also uh, from Autodesk. Which one? Yes, Civil 3D. Yes. Civil 3D. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, Civil 3D is also from Autodesk. So, you, I think. Previously, there was separate uh, part of Dynamo, such as Dynamo Studio. I guess now they are adding into the Revit itself. OK. So okay. to understand Dynamo, you need to have mm -hmm. like good understanding of BIM process and Revit. OK, for example, for example, Civil 3D is new for me and I don't know on which basis like Civil 3D works. OK, simply if I go to directly like Dynamo, then that will not help me. So if I if I know like understanding of each and every tools here, that will be easy for me to like explore more about Dynamo. OK. And okay. Dynamo, it's a visual programming tool. So they're like, see, general, they're general things. There are two types of programming tools. OK, one is like mm -hmm. uh, we can say visual and textual. OK, mm -hmm. these are like general oh. things. OK, So visual programming tool is your Python, for example. Sorry, uh, visual programming is, for example, Dynamo and textual programming is maybe like Python here. OK, so this is like okay. visual and textual. So for us, like directly starting with textual programming will be difficult. So that is why we have visual programming. OK, OK, so in that way, maybe you can start. But again, to make this Dynamo unlimited, you need to again learn Python. 
Python. Okay. If you if I just uh, because again Dynamo contains some limitations like Revit contains limitation. We need to break those limitation to break. We are using Dynamo again to break the limitations because every node is not available here. You need to maybe develop some custom nodes. OK, for those mm -hmm. custom nodes, you need to like learn Python scripting in Dynamo. OK. Yeah. OK, got it. Thanks, man. OK. So any other uh, like person who want to ask some questions? Maybe related to general BI. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. I want to know more about the scan to be OK. Mm -hmm. What it means and what is used for this. Oh, I'm not getting uh, your your voice is not clear. Can you check? Yeah, I say uh, what is the purpose uh, for uh, this term uh, scan to be and uh, where it is used and why it is uh, means, uh, required. Mm -hmm. You mean like what is the purpose of scan to be? See, for example, see, for example, if there is any mall, OK. Is is the if, if if it is there like any existing mall? So. For example, for a mall or for a for anything like we need to have some maintenance. OK. All right, so using like traditional things of uh, like types of thing to do like maintenance and all it will be like difficult for the facility manager management team okay for example if you have this like uh, any archive room okay sorry one moment just for example if you have any like archive rooms here where you're placing all the documents related to like facility management Okay, for example, in this mall, you have the lights. Okay, and you know, like for everything, you'll be having like some warranty, guarantee, and everything. So those documents, like hard copies and everything, maybe like uh, you're placing in just one room. Okay, and if anything happens here, like any like light is not working, any escalator is not working, any lift is not working. You know, like for a mall, the facility management is required at maybe higher level. So if the escalator is not working, then again people will not be happy to write right to like go with like manual staircase and all. OK, maybe they wanted to use escalator. So now if escalator is not working, we need to have some maintenance information for this one. And that information just assume that you are just uh, placing in just one room. OK, in this way and you went here and you're just maybe searching for the documents and maybe you lost with some documents and maybe it will take time for you to search. OK, so instead of having this much of like information, OK, you can have all the information in just one model here. But for this model, OK, to create to create this model, you need some references. Maybe you need to go to like mall here and you need to do some measurements and everything. OK, so that will take like a lot of time. Right, so instead of that one, if you have like this scan file, for example, there are some point load scanners. OK. So if you use these scanners to do some scanning and all, OK, and you bought all the 3D model into just Revit because there is an option in Revit. If you go to insert, there is an option here like to import point cloud. And once you import the point cloud using that like point cloud, you can easily convert the model into the model. Sorry, into point cloud into the model by taking as a reference and this, this model. You can add again the information of facility management or whatever because as we discussed like whatever once you created the model we know like or because the project is existing now for example because the construction is done now after the construction now for example we need to use this bim model for renovation so you can use you need to use this bim model for like operation maintenance you can use you need to use this BIM model for demolition. You can use and also, for example, the governments, they can use this model to create city information model. OK, we are using we are just creating a BIM model building model. Maybe government needs this BIM model for like uh, city information, like for example, in Netherlands, 
so in netherland they did this one okay netherland housing beam so from the government it is like compulsory now for every house to be converted into like digital model itself okay as per the government rules now for example some houses in netherland maybe are there from 1990s 1980s you can check out so netherland government mandated this nen 2580 so using this one they need beam based digital digital twins okay so whatever the existing houses are there or buildings commercial whatever it is so we need to convert those into beam model so like you know maybe if the project is from 1980 maybe you are having just a drawing okay or maybe the drawing is not visible maybe we sketch using pen scale or something like that tools so instead of doing that thing we can just do point cloud like scanning for this one we can get a point cloud and easily we can work okay using just one reference okay yes is it clear but, uh, right. what is the uh, yeah. digital twins uh, mm -hmm. term Maybe it's mm -hmm. a structure or it's a term using. See, see, again, digital twin. So whatever the digital twin mm -hmm. they're using, you can check out. See, digital twin is again a general technology. OK, see, point cloud is also general technology. You can check out here. In this plane, maybe you can understand. So there is a physical plane, OK, and the same model we have in, for example, virtual representation that is like digital. So if anything happens, OK, in plane that will reflect in the digital twin here. So that means this model, the physical model is connected to the digital model that is like connected maybe through IoT, but this is like digital twin means the same replica of the physical. OK, and both will be connected. So if anything happens in like physical, OK, that will reflect in the digital model here. The same thing we are using for the building. That is why we say like in future there will be like smart buildings, OK, smart cities. So what it is? So it is about like digital twin only. OK, for a smart city to become. So we need to have like a digital representation of the uh, like physical buildings, infrastructure, everything. So if anything happens in real, that should reflect in the model itself. Maybe that is your you can check out here. You can maybe like go through these things. OK, how digital twin help OK in solving the problems in the same way in, in buildings like escalator we discussed right now. If anything happens to the escalator that will again reflect in the digital twin. OK, so some digital twin platforms are there. You can maybe go through these things like from Autodesk. There is like uh, tandem. OK, so this tandem. You can check out. So this is also you can check out uh, Autodesk Tandem is a cloud based digital twin technology platform. It enables projects to start digital, stay digital and transforming rich data into business intelligence. So maybe you can go through in this. One. Is it clear? Yes, yes thanks. Got it. OK, so any other things we have? Yes. Uh, Sayed, if you if you could uh, share this presentation, it could be easy for us to go through that and get some idea. This is a very nice presentation. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I will share both recordings and the PPT. You can go through. That will be great. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think it's uh, clear for everyone. We almost maybe spend one hour. So still, if you have any question, you can reach me on WhatsApp. OK. So all right. Thank you for like joining this session. All right. We'll again maybe meet in future. Yeah, Syed, it's a good session. Huh? Thank yeah. you for your assets. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, all right. Thank you.
പിന്നെ ഇതിപ്പോ പോർട്ടബിൾ തീരും പോർട്ടബിൾ വീടാണ് ഇല്ല ഇല്ല ഇറിഗേഷൻ ഷുവർ ഷോമി തുടങ്ങി